This is LBC from Global, leading Britain's conversation with Eddie Mayer. But right now, uh, we're going to start something we've never done before on this programme. We're going to try something this hour we've never done, and that's make an interesting programme. No, 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 no. It may be interesting. I can't promise anything. LBC, as you know, prides itself on leading Britain's conversation. And LBC's been on the air since 1973. And phone calls from listeners have always been crucial to its success. Now, when we're listening, I don't know about you, but uh, I sometimes shout at the radio when I hear things I think are wrong. Uh, We sometimes hear callers, don't we, that we wish we'd shut up. And we sometimes hear callers we could listen to all day. Since 2014, LBC has been a UK-wide station and, of course, we can be heard online from anywhere in the world. Millions of people listen to LBC every week and over the years, who knows how many people have called in. But what about you? This hour, I want to dedicate to you if you have never phoned LBC. Don't feel bad about it. Neither have I. This hour, if you've never phoned us, I'd like you to pick up the phone and call. I haven't worked out what we should talk about yet, but I'd love to hear from you. Uh, We can get into what we discuss. Uh, I mean, I don't particularly want to... Don't come on and sell me stuff, and I don't want you to come on and convert me to any religion. You're perfectly entitled to your view, but I don't want that. But it would be great to hear from you if you've literally never phoned LBC, but you've listened Maybe you're quite a new listener. We're getting listeners all the time. Uh, or maybe you've been with us for years. I was inspired to do this by Mandy, who phoned in last night to talk about food banks. Here's part of our conversation. I'd just like to say I think I've listened to LBC since your inaugural bro- broadcast in the 1970s, but I've never phoned in, so excuse me if I'm nervous. Well, wait, wait, uh, wait, 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 Mandy. <laughs> what, what kept you? Um... <laughs> I get nervous, but my husband's just been pushing me to phone you. Your husband's Um, been pushing you? Just now, yes. I see. What what exactly did he say to you? Okay, well, I have got experience both in England and in Israel of food banks. Right. To start with Israel, um, one of my daughters lives there, and just like in England, she's a care worker on a very low wage, and these food banks are totally, totally um, run on volunteers, uh, volunteers, and voluntary donations. Mandy, I'm very glad you called in because it's been very interesting to hear all of that. I've got lots of questions for you, if you don't mind. With pleasure. Um, not not about this, uh, but I'm, I'm intrigued. First of all, when you said you, you listened to LBC since it started in 1973, you've got a very young-sounding voice. So I, Thank you. I thought, you I've know, got a very young, sound, a very young-looking face as well, well, but I'm happy to say that I'm past 70. Well, good for you on all fronts. Um, now, over the years... Who have been your favourites? Because there have been many wonderful people who've come and gone. And, and, Robbie and, Vincent. And Steve, of <laughs> Sorry, course. Steve's I always been here. Robbie speak, Vincent, yep. Who else? <laughs> um, oh, lots and lots of people. Clive Bull, I love. Yes. <laughs> um, still. Um, do you remember Charles Golding? Personally, I don't. Tell me about Charles Golding. Right, so he used to do a night time. No, not... Wait a minute. Yes, Charles, that's right. He used to do a nighttime slot, also very, very good. Um, uh, oh, gosh. And you've been listening you know, since 1973, spot, and you've never phoned in. Up, I, know, not so I know it'll all come back to you. <laughs> but you've never called in. You must have been tempted a few times. Yeah, I have. Seriously, I have been tempted, but um, I, I just didn't. That's Mandy on the programme last night. She finally picked up the phone after listening to LBC for 47 years and said what she wanted to say about food banks. Which is why tonight, if you've never called LBC in all your life, I want to hear from you. You're in good company. I've never called LBC either. I've worked in radio since I was 17. I probably did my first phone-in at the age of 19, but I've never phoned a radio station. Well, you know, I sometimes phone the office and ask where they are. But I've never phoned in to to appear on air. And if you're in a similar position, and I think most people are, let me, if I can put it like this, let me take your LBC virginity tonight. You know the number. You've heard it a million times. But something has stopped you calling. Tonight, take courage. Take the phone in your hand. 
and dial 0345 6060 973. Now you might wonder what on earth are we going to talk about? I hadn't the faintest idea. We can talk about what took you so long. Maybe you're very busy. Maybe you're nervous. Maybe you're not completely sure of your view. That's me uh, quite a lot of the time. I have doubt. I love people who phone in and they're certain. They're certain about whatever it is we're talking about and you get the impression some people are certain about everything. But I, I'm i racked with <laughs> doubt about most things. So it may be you don't phone in because you you feel, I don't have a strong opinion, so I, I, I can't phone in. Well, that's fine, but for this hour, we can talk about your not strong opinion. We can talk about you not phoning in, but you need to phone in first. Is this making sense? If Mandy can do it after 47 years of putting it off, why not you tonight? I can even play some Fat Larry's band to get you in the mood. And obviously, if no one calls in, then I'll just play Fat Larry's band between now and 7 o'clock. Although Ofcom, who, by the way, are doing a terrific job, will probably have something to say about that. So, spare my blushes. You know the number, 0345 6060 What shall we talk about? We might talk about what you like to listen to on the radio, as we did with Mandy. What you think of the callers who do phone in. You could exact revenge, having been angry at some of them over the years. When you hear the arguments about... Covid or Brexit or politics, do you sit up or do you put your fingers in your ears? Where have you been on your holidays this year? What are your hopes and dreams? I've no idea what we might talk about, but picking up the phone is the first act. Mandy did it after 47 years. Now she has joined Britain's conversation. So what about you? People have lots of reasons for not calling. Some people think they have a bad voice or maybe the tea is cooking at this time. Or they don't like to give an opinion. Tonight's the night you can knock this off your bucket list. Phone LBC. Tick. 0345 6060973. Here's Paul in Devon. Paul, welcome. Hello. My goodness me. I'm surprised I'm all. Um, yeah, it's, it's a random a random thought, really. I, I work in the uh, National Health Service, and I've been working from home, but also um, reviewing patients I visit in, in hospital that we have to place out of county because there's not enough provision in Devon for them. Um, and, um, oh, I'm, I'm waffling. Sorry. No, listen, that's fine. It's your first time. Um, so my my question is about... Um, uh, I'm, 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 it's C-word, COVID, I'm afraid, and, um, you know, the, what the future... How, it, it, you know, what the future is regarding... Uh, um, uh, I suppose, from my um, selfish position as a as a nurse, a psychiatric nurse, is um, I haven't seen any patients uh, since March. I, I go and review patients, but I review them because of the infection control. Uh, uh, <clears throat> now, what's that going? been like, not seeing patients? Because you'll have got into this it's because weird. you like people. It's yeah, it's been weird the last six months. I tell you, it's been way really weird. Um, you know, I, I, I review patients and the, and the consultant reviews the patients after the meeting, so to speak. So, yeah. And what's happening honest. to those people? I mean, you're obviously suffering as a result, but what about them? They're not getting the help they need. I'm either. not suffering. I'm not suffering. But wow. they, uh, it just can, um, uh, everyone's individual, everyone's unique. So they've got their own different stories where they've been hospitalised. So, you know, because of confidentiality, confidentiality hmm. politics, they can't. You know, hey, tell me, Paul, how, how long have you been listening to LBC? I've been listening to you for about a year now. Um, yeah, so I listen to you and I listen to your colleague, James, in the morning. James? O'Brien. Oh, right. Did you, did you not, James? Do you know James? I'd, I'd, you're saying the name to me and I'd maybe... I'd, you Sorry. know, it rings a bell. No, no, it rings a bell now you mention it. <laughs> and why in all that year? I mean, I bet you've heard stuff on the radio and you've thought, oh, that makes me angry or, oh, I want to add something. But you, it's taken till now. I'm really glad you phoned. But what what, okay. what holds you back? Uh, it's the unknown. It's the unknown, Eddie, regarding the, you know, the future. 
of the whatever the new normal is, basically. Mm. I think in the whole of society, you know, shopping. I haven't been in town. Town. I actually went to town uh, this weekend just to pay a check in at the at the bank and they're holding the wall, and um, it was packed, you know, with buskers and things. But a couple of months ago, there was hardly anyone walking around the town, and there were some shops that were not boarded up, but there was empty. There was just no stock. Strange times. Paul, I'm really glad you picked up the phone to to speak to us for the first time. Thank you for listening. Thank you for calling. Here's Jeremy now in Oxted. Welcome, Jeremy. Your first time? Yes, it is my first time. Thank you for letting me speak. No, and, thank uh, you for coming on. Well, I wanted to talk about, first of all, how what I've been struck by is that the callers that call into LBC and Radio 5 Live and other channels what? actually really reflect the common sense of the nation. And, you know, as we look at the politics, and I want to talk about COVID, I, I see and I sense that when I listen to the callers, I really know that the people of Britain have got great common sense. They understand everything to do with politics and the issues, plus or minus. And therefore, I want to tell you about me being a caller with common sense, like I think everybody else, and my abject, complete and utter frustration at the way the government is dealing with one thing around COVID, which is the testing at airports or the lack of it. And why I haven't called in, but why I am now, is because I just don't feel there's any way that I can vent my frustration and turn it into action. So I decided two weeks ago to change that and to see if I could mobilise and organise that testing was actually undertaken at airports. And what I've been shocked by is how unbelievably hard it is to speak to anybody within government or anywhere to try and uh, see if we can mobilise this. And actually, just a little bit of background, I'm actually the CEO of a company. In fact, I'm an unemployed CEO, and I'm unemployed because first we had Brexit, then we had the elections, and now we've had COVID. And each of those things has stopped me being able to get a job. But uh, the other day I came in, if I may just say one last thing, came in via Eurotunnel because uh, I went abroad actually to climb the Matterhorn and shot across there by car. And though I filled in the electronic form, which, by the way, I could, and others are, could easily put in misinformation because there's no checks, then not a single person checked me as I came off the Eurotunnel to say, have I filled in the form? Where have I been? And then we hear this random quarantining of people from Greece or whatever, and we're not even bringing something as intelligent and as common sense as testing people and actually putting it in place. And I can't even describe my frustration as a CEO at the at the complete chaos that this government and the civil servant and whoever else it is is, is expressing by not putting this in place. So. But you have, Jeremy, and that's the joy. I'm so glad you picked up the phone to say what you wanted to say. If you are like Jeremy and Paul, you've never called LBC before, this is your moment. We can talk about why you haven't called, but pick up the phone, 0345 6060 more, after the news from Tim Humphrey. This is LBC with Eddie Mayer. Call 0345 6060 yeah, it's LBC Virgins only tonight on that number, inspired by Mandy, who rang in yesterday to talk about... Uh, well, it doesn't matter what she wanted to talk about. The point is, she picked up the phone, having listened to LBC since 1973, and she's still of sound mind, and she picked up the phone last night and, and told me what she thought about something, which was great. And that's why tonight I want to give airtime as much as possible to, to you, if you haven't ever picked up the phone, but you've been a, a long-time listener as they say in the biz. Here's Nikki in Camborne in Cambridge. Hi, Nikki. For how long have you been listening to LBC? Hi, Eddie. Um, I've been listening to it for probably about 15 years. Uh, me and my husband would normally listen to it before going to bed and we'd listen to um, uh, Radio 5 Live normally on a Friday and Saturday night to listen to Steve Nolan and then the rest of the week we'd listen to LBC. Um, but since coronavirus, I've been listening to LBC every day, driving into work and back. What do you do? What's, what do you do for work? Um, I just work in an office, so basically just finance um, supervisor. But you've been going to the office, which is more than some people have been able to do. Yeah, we've been back in the office since the beginning of June. Um, so we worked from home for just over two months. How was that? 
Um, it was difficult. So every task seemed to take a lot longer. Um, I have to use workarounds to to get um, the job done, really. But, yeah, we managed. <laughs> How are things back at the office? Yeah, it's good. Um, so we've all got Perspex screens up between the desks. Uh, we've got hand sanitizers everywhere and everybody's respecting each other's distance. Um, yeah, we, we're getting on fine. Are you allowed to put a yellow stickies on the Perspex uh, screens, photographs, personal mementos, or do you have to keep it clean? Oh, we haven't actually been told either way, but oh. we've just kept them clean. Yeah, probably wise. Now, look, why haven't you <laughs> phoned in before after 15 years, Nikki? Um, I, I don't know, really. I, I guess I've just never had a reason to call in, but as you've asked the new callers, I thought, well, why not? Fantastic. How often do you disagree with the callers you hear on the radio? Um, probably about half the time, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and your husband, do you argue about the callers, or do you just let it drift over you? Um, we tend to agree, actually, when when we um, don't agree with, with whoever's on the call, we tend to agree on that. <laughs> and having that phoned in, ha- no, I do, uh, having, having phoned in, will you do it again? Yeah, I don't see why not. It didn't take too long to, to hold to get through. So, there you yeah. go. Fantastic, Nikki. I will hear from you at some point in the future. Thank you. Uh, Sharif is in uh, Chelsea. Hi, welcome to the programme. What kept you? Hi, thank you very much for taking my call. I'm actually quite surprised how easy it is to get on the show. Uh, so thank you very much for having me. Um, I've, um, I- unlike your speakers earlier, I've been listening. I've not been listening to LBC, I'm going to be honest, for as long as they have. But since COVID, I have been uh, listening to it almost on a daily basis, even at work. What do you do for work? Uh, I'm a consultant surgeon for the NHS. I work in London. And how's business been these last few months? So, yeah, so what prompted me to call you is Jeremy's call because I echo what he said. Business has been, uh, I've been very busy. Uh, in the start of the COVID response, I've been doing my, uh, I've done about 28 days straight of work, uh, some of them clinical, some of them not. And it has been, busy but good busy where i felt i was uh, helping and doing my thing but right now i'm actually very frustrated because i'm the reason i'm calling you is i just landed at heathrow um it was due to essential travel my mom was having surgery back in cairo where i originally come from and uh, it was like a six week time off which i had arranged with my managers uh and um before i left there was an exemption for healthcare workers where i could come back and start work straight away and then this was cancelled on the 31st of July. And now I have to come and self-isolate for 14 days, which I actually find um, ridiculous, to be honest with you, because I don't, I mean, if, if Germany are doing airport testing, why can't we? Um, you get me to work the next day. I, you don't lose my, even if this comes out of my annual leave or whatever, I think I'd, I'd be better off being at work and serving my patients. I will be doing my my online clinics and I'll be doing my virtual consultations and my multidisciplinary team meetings, but I will still not be operating or actually physically seeing patients. And uh, if I were tested, two tests like they do, I would have been cleared. So uh, it's something that the government really has to get rolled and or give us the exemption back. How's your mum? Thank you very much for asking. She just left hospital yesterday after about three weeks in, so uh, she's very well. It's very kind of you to ask. Thank you. I'm, I'm interested. I, I took all of your points on board, and, and uh, airport testing, as you say, Jeremy, uh, uh, raised some, some interesting thoughts on that too. In terms of the, the work you do, uh, as you know, mm-hmm. and we've talked about this on the programme, the, mm-hmm. the pressure on the NHS, uh, cancelled operations, uh, undiagnosed illnesses, from your perspective, uh, holding the scalpel, how does it all look? The waiting lists are bigger and bigger. Uh, some patients have been very well served, such as cancer patients, when we started rolling the uh, the surgeries back. But others with benign conditions uh, are still waiting. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, this is not being helped by things such as the lack of COVID testing and losing some of your work power. Of course, there are many, many other things that come in play. And hopefully in the coming few weeks, it looks like it's starting to get better and better. We're getting more operative lists. We're doing more clinics. And everyone is very keen to help in the NHS. So I think things are going to start getting better. And I'm hoping that we do not get a second wave so that we start serving the patients who have been kept on the waiting lists for that long. 
Sharif, thank you for calling in. I wish you well. Please call us again. Chris is in York. <coughs> Hello, Chris. How are you? Hi, I'm very well, thank you. Um, it was the lady who was saying she'd listened since 1973. I do remember LBC starting up in October 1973, and I listened to it then. But I moved away, and I mean, the best thing that's ever happened is actually getting LBC on DAB across the country now rather than just, just in London. What do you remember about October 1973? How old were you, Chris, back then? Oh, I was, I was, I was, just, just a, a boy. Yeah, that's right. So, early 20s, shall we say. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, when I do remember people like Douglas Cameron, Bob Holness and oh, The yes. Breakfast Show in the morning, they were great. Douglas Cameron, but, I mean, besides any of his other qualities, that voice... Oh, I know. I know. It was wonderful. And also, there was a time way back then when, before every commercial, because you were the first commercial station in the country, um, before every commercial, I actually had three notes from a xylophone, so you could tell the difference between the commercial and, and what was programmed. Can you remember the notes? <laughs> no, they oh. were remarkably forgettable. Thought you were building up to something there, Chris. <laughs> no, but I wasn't. What I was going to say is that although I've never called LBC, somebody called LBC from my phone once, and that was because uh, I, I, I used to live in Belsize Park opposite the tube station, and one night there was something going on there, and I went down, you know, I, was, I was looking around, and I, I saw this guy, young guy, and this was before mobile phones or anything like that, and it was... Do you remember, the, was it Stephen Lawrence? Was it Stephen Lawrence? It was the guy who got the police arrested um, after a shooting. And he ran all the way from the tube station from Hampstead down to Belsize Park and he was right. caught. And I saw it all. Stephen and this Lawrence. this guy was your, your reporter. And he was just, he knew something was up, but he didn't know what to do. And he immediately tapped me on the shoulder and said, can I use your phone? Oh, so, there you are. so your phone <laughs> has been on LBC, but you haven't until today. This is true, yeah. So who do you, who's your favourite? Well, yeah, it, it's a it's a draw between you and. No, you don't know. Um, you don't have to say anything nice about me. I'm I'm see it because because I've been listening to LBC for many years. Uh, yeah, not something I could talk. I used to work at the at the BBC until I was I got fired for uh, singing uh, Rule Britannia too lustily <laughs> in the office. Uh, but I I listened to LBC for donkey's years, you know, and Steve and Nick and yeah. the other guys on in the morning, and you know, and Sheila I hear more than ever now, and she is just. Uh, she is without uh, equal, I, I I believe. What about you? Well, I, I, I love Nick Ferrari in the morning. I yeah. really do. But I daren't ring him because apart from resounding common sense, I'll probably say something he'll be able to put me down on and say, thank you for your call and, and get rid of me within, what, 15 seconds or something like that. But, uh, yeah, I think, that, yeah, he's, he's in the morning is great. But of course, the other one was, of course, Clive Bull a million oh, yes. years ago when, when Peter Cook used to ring up as Sven from, from wherever it was. <laughs> <laughs> and still doing fine work. Would, would you like me to hang up? Would you like me to get angry with you and, and, and cut you off? Would that help you, Chris? <laughs> well, I'll start speaking. Uh, go away, I'm sick of you. Here's the news now at 6.31. Tim Humphrey with the headlines. Let's hear now from Mike in Oldham. Mike, thanks for calling in. How long have you been listening to LBC? Eddie, I once heard... Warmest greetings to you, by the way. And to you. I once heard you when I was visiting London in 1974, in September 74... Uh, in more recent times, I heard you very sadly, only very briefly, when a dab sent, set was sent to me for a review. On, mon on Sunday of this week, I ordered a smart speaker, a beautiful big set. It turned up, and I thought, I must listen to the great Mr. Mayor this afternoon, and I have done, and I'm now ringing him up. Well, that is very kind of you. Now, just to be clear, when you say listening to listening to us, you mean listening to LBC in 1974. In, because, indeed. Because I'm only 28. I don't think so, sir. Well, leaving that to one side, tell me about your speaker. Are you, are you just thrilled skinny with it? Uh, no, no, it's a, it's a beautiful... Uh, hang on, hang on, Eddie. He measures eight, eight tall by... S the cylinder's about six inches wide. Sorry I'm using old money. That's all right. Um, and it makes a very big sound. Can it sounds a bit hollow on the human speech at low level, where, the way you might listen at night, yeah. but it's OK. And it, has it got a good bass feel to it? Oh, oh hugely so. Hugely so. And the, the top is good as well. But Mike? there's something peculiar. Yeah, yeah. There's something peculiar in the middle on speech. Like what? C c can I help with how I'm speaking? Yeah, what? yeah. Hang on, Eddie. Uh, the only way... Uh, do, do forgive. It's like if you were standing with your head 
I'll just go to the sink in my room. Yeah. As if you were standing near the sink and a slightly tunnelly effect. I don't know whether anybody else has noticed it. Well, hold on, let me, let me try this. I'm going to sit about... Hold on a sec, Mike. What about this now? That's about... It, a pecu- there's a peculiar similarity between oh. that, that and the noise, I, the sound I hear. Well, I'll tell you what to do, Mike. Turn it up. Uh, Rachel, um, just a second. Uh, Rachel, just stand, stay where you are, Rachel. Your, your, your moment, your first moment on LBC. I just want to put it on hold, if I may, because I think it was Chris a moment or two ago said that in the old days, uh, in the days of Valve Radio, LBC used to play uh, a three-note chime before the ads because uh, LBC was the first commercial radio station in the United Kingdom, 1973. And to uh, differentiate, and the, the forerunner to Ofcom, who, by the way, are doing a terrific job, which I guess must have been, would that have been the IBA back then? Blank looks. Thanks for your help on this. Uh, it may have been the IBA, possibly, I think it was something before. Anyway, that doesn't really matter. Um, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, the three notes. So, uh, to, to differentiate, so you wouldn't be confused between uh, the ads and the, the editorial, they would play a three note. And we think we found the three notes. So let's hear it. Well, first of all, that's four, Chris. So thank you for lying to me. Uh, but great. Are we allowed to play that into the next ad break? Can we? Oh, no, we've got headlines, haven't we? Never mind. That was a thought. Um, anyway, so, Rachel, sorry to keep you. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm fine. Sorry for chuntering on when you were waiting patiently on no, the phone. No, not at all. How long have you been listening to LBC? So I've been listening to LBC about four years now. Um, my husband has been listening for longer, and he's actually quite a regular um, caller in. Oh, is um, he? He'd always call in on his drive home from work. Um, the reason I'm actually calling is about him, because uh, during the pandemic, he was diagnosed with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Oh, really? Yeah, so um, he's going through chemotherapy at the moment, so I wanted to give a huge shout-out to the NHS staff. They are just amazing. We're very lucky here in Reading with the Royal Barks. Um, And while Liam is doing um, the chemotherapy, he's actually doing a blog, and it's called Cooking Through Cancer. And with that, he's trying to raise funds for Macmillan and Royal Barks, doing a blog, doing recipes for other people going through chemotherapy. So, um, yeah, he's doing really well. Very nice, Rachel. Now, when Liam is in the best of health, and I hope he returns to root health soon, what's he normally phoning in about? What what gets a bee in his bonnet? Well, it could be any number of things. <laughs> um, he hasn't been ringing in recently no. much about the COVID thing or that. Um, obviously, he's been busy. Yeah. But he, yeah, I can't actually remember the last thing he called in about, but it would be more general things and um, not so political more about things like Rachel, yeah, Rachel you sound like you don't listen to him I, <laughs> to be honest you've got me in one <laughs> <laughs> He's phoning LBC all the time, but you don't know why. Does does he come off the, does he come off the phone and say, "Well, I I told them. I told them." No, no, he normally has a good chat with you guys. So, okay. yeah, he normally comes okay. back saying, "Oh, I was on LBC today." <laughs> And now you've picked up the phone, which is great. Are you glad you did it? I have it? picked up the phone. Yes, me too. Uh, do you want to mouth off about anything? Oh, th- to be honest, don't get me started. <gasps> um, oh. I, basically, I could mouth off a bit about a lot of things, oh. but at the moment, um, my concerns at the moment are about um, education, kids going back to school, the pressures on them. Um, I actually work in a school. I have two children in school. And luckily our school has gotten a COVID fund, but I honestly don't think it's going to touch the sides. Um, Basically, the children that are coming back, obviously they're behind and so on, but it's more their mental health and well-being that Mm. um, I think should be looked at. And just don't get me started on the whole education system as a whole, how it's so pressurised at the moment and how... It's so exam and points focused that I think they're missing a big trick with the over mental health of young children today. Does that feel better? Ah, yes. <laughs> That's why we're here, Rachel. Thank you. Good luck to your husband. I think you said Liam. I wish him all the best. Can we 
just squeeze in a quick call with Sheila. Hello, Sheila in Dorking. Oh, hi, Eddie. How are you? Very well. How are you coping? Um, no, um, very well, thank you, I'd say. Yeah. And uh, what about you? How long have you been listening to this wonderful oh, station? Of course. Um, I'm thinking between eight and nine years. What got you started? Can you remember? Did someone recommend it or did you just... Yeah, it's actually my husband. And he's talking about this um, LBC Red and I'm thinking, what, what is that? Mm. <laughs> we were just driving one day and I said, what, what are you listening to? And, and of course, I like music, so I always like to watch um, music. And uh, I just got hooked. <laughs> But you've never phoned in until now. No, I'm such a nervous person. Even now, I'm shaking. You're not really. I am. You fi- are you <laughs> physically shaking? Yeah. <laughs> what do you think is going to happen to you? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny, but I just like I just thought, oh my god, I love listening to you. So I used to, um, I used to listen a lot to um, Ian Dale because mm-hmm. I always, when I'm driving back home, he used to be on. So and you took his place. <laughs> I think, yeah. And then I sort of missed um, listening to to Ian, and then I said, oh, my God, let me try. And now I love listening to you, I have to say. So well, I that's very wait. nice of you. And I hope you, still <laughs> listen to, I hope you still listen to Ian after seven. Well, I can't because I'm busy <sighs> at home and I'm doing things because I'm at home, yeah. And in the morning when I'm driving to work, I listen to uh, Nick Ferrari, so, yeah. Anyway. Well, that's yeah. good. Well, you can always listen back to Ian. He's got lots of good stuff, as you can imagine. Uh, I know, only g- when I'm running late from work okay. and then I do catch a little bit of Ian before I get home. Okay. So has, not, has, all, not often. Has your husband called us before? No. <laughs> He's, oh, no, I don't think he would. He, he listens to, to LBC a lot. Okay. But you, you've never called in. And now that you've called in, and hopefully you're shaking a bit less, <laughs> is there anything on your mind? You don't have to have something you want to say. That's fine. It's great talking to you. But is there, is there? are you like Rachel? And uh, now you're on, do you want to say something? Do you want to just mm, get it off your chest? No, well, not really. I just, it's all, I'm in mess. So, yeah, so I'm just hoping that um, usually there won't be like a really um, second, big second wave of of, uh, of COVID infections because um, it was horrible um, mm. because I was on the front line and it was really stressful going to work. Like, really what is it you do, Sheila? I'm a nurse. Do you want to tell um, me more? I work, um, yes, I'm a nurse. Um, I work at a, um, a huge oncology hospital um, in Surrey. So, so we haven't got an A and E. So we're not as um, maybe we were on luckier a little bit that we were not seeing more, but we still saw a little bit. It was just scary not knowing <laughs> what, when, whether you're going to be the next one to get it. Or yeah. Something like that. So yeah. And and did but you? Feel- I never missed work at all. I literally prayed so hard that I'm going to be the last one standing because I. I did not want to get, I, I just, but if I went every day, that would be good with me. <laughs> oh, well, listen, thank you very much for your work. And thank you. Do you feel safe at work? Um, I, no, we, yes, actually, I do now. Um, <laughs> at the height of the pandemic, I'm, I'm, I didn't think I was safe, but mm. now I do. Yeah, now it's, it's, it's okay. I'm much calmer and stuff. Well, look, thank you, as I say, for your work. And thank you for calling in, Sheila. I hope you do it again sometime soon. <laughs> Eddie, You're welcome any time. Take care. That's Thank Sheila. Uh, we will we'll, we will do this again. This has been huge fun for me. I hope it has been uh, for you too.